And I work here as an animator. I also do uh, tours on a weekly basis. Um, uh, this is a bit short notice, so excuse the, uh, <laughs> the rough setup. Um, basically, what I'm going to be doing is explaining to you the, uh, the animation process. This, uh, this studio uh, hires over 100 people to produce the Raccoons uh, series that appears on television on uh, Sunday nights. Um, we're, we're doing other specials now and we're planning to, uh, to do a movie in the new year. Uh, so things are really building. The studio's been in existence for just uh, about two years now. So it's, uh, it's really going well. Um, so I'll explain the, the process. Like I said, there are a lot of people involved. Everybody's creative and everybody has a special task. Um, so it's all broken down in different departments. The first step in the production is the script. And uh, we have writers who, uh, who go write the script based on the characters. And this is a script like you would find in any production, mostly dialogue, the odd indication as to the locale of the uh, system here. With two flat pegs and one round them, if you notice the paper is punched to cut that into 50 pegs. So I take these drawings of cereal, put them on. And they fit. This keeps the drawings registered, keeps them all perfectly lined up. And that's very important, otherwise they would jiggle in the camera. And the same registration is used on the backgrounds, the layouts, and every step of production until the final shooting under the camera. So this is why we're keeping everything lined up. And when I stick my fingers between the pages this way at my desk, I can flip the drawings and draw and see the movement as I'm drawing. So I'm never just working with one individual drawing. I'm always thinking of a whole. And movement. These are key drawings. These are not all the drawings that are there. They're drawings that go in between. For instance, this is drawing number two, and this is drawing number five. In between number two and five, there are two drawings, three and four. Four, there's a little chart here. Between two and five, four up falls halfway. So the assistant will take these drawings, and he'll find a halfway position between these two, and he'll draw it in. And then, when he looks, he sees that number three falls halfway between number two and four. So he takes his finished drawing in number four and works it and puts it up against number two, flips those two, and then third finds number three, which is halfway between that. So it's sort of always try we try to keep things falling half with subdivision. This helps keeps the characters very tight, very keep all the proportions very exact, so that there's no change in the character from one drawing to the next. They're all. Xerox then match, that means lined up with the original drawing, so they're still in the exact position. Then they go to an opaquing department. Now the opakers, another group of about 20 30 people, who actually have to paint these cells individually. Now, they use some sort of an acrylic paint, a special form of the love that prevents it from cracking. And they paint the back side of each cell. So the line is still intact when you turn it around. Um, there, are, there are model sheets for all the characters. This is a, a size comparison chart. Again, we have to keep their size consistent. You know, uh, we have to know that Shaper is the tallest and that Cedric is slightly taller than his father and the pig is always so high, otherwise the characters will tend to be different. But we have a model sheet for each character. And even we have what we call um, expression sheets, which gives us an idea of what the characters are like in different expressions. Doing different. So this gives a, a feel for the character. Okay. Another thing that happens, to jump back a bit, with the script, after the script is written, it goes, it's handed over to the, to the actors who do the voices, and there's a recording session that takes place in Toronto, and they record the dialogue beforehand, before any of the animation starts. And it's transferred uh, to magnetic track, 16 millimeters. Sometimes you use 35. Following oh, scenes, so they're on a separate level. Okay. Revealing the inside of the room. Now, the inside of the room changes, or if I don't know, or if it's reused in a future show with a different interior. So that's on a separate level as well. If you we want to reuse this background and fill it with gold, then all we have to do is repaint this section here and line it up. The doors go back on top. And then we have Cyril coming in. Then we have the crate, which is again painted, but stuck onto cell. 
Then we have Ralph. And we have Cedric's body. Cedric's head. And finally, Cedric's mouth. Um, the reason we do this is not to be cruel, although we do get tired of drawing the same characters <laughs> year after year. Um, <laughs> uh, it's, it's for economy. Um, if a character stops moving but continues talking, there's no reason why we should have to redraw the body or that part that's not moving over and over again. This area is checking. They check the animation and they check the, uh, the finished cells and everything and make sure that all, there are no mistakes before we go to color. If there are any mistakes, they go back to the animators of the department where they're made, so you're up to so far. Um, the people working at their desk, they have a light box so they can uh, see the paint, the thickness of the paint. <laughs> and then, um, This is a drawing of Luto playing beers. And this is the paint itself to draw. You can see how the strip has been taped to match the original. And this flimsy protects the acetate. And the opaquers wear gloves so not to get fingerprints on, like I'm doing, <laughs> on the cell. And they paint one color at a time. They usually start with the uh, the dark colors and work towards the light. And they do one color and then they, they stack the, shell, the, the cell and work on to the next one. And while, the after they got through the series, they to draw and do the next one. Oh, uh, they're... Uh, yeah,